All right, we are here at my Urban Worm Bag, and I am so excited because I have wanted one of these for a long time. My wife, the executive producer, got it for me for Christmas. So what we're going to do today is we are going to take it out of the box, put it together, and we are going to give it its first feeding and add compost worms. So stick with me as I put it together, and let's get started. All right, so really good packaging. Comes with a cardboard box right from the start. It had a label on it and this is how it came. So we're gonna be able to shred this and feed it to the worms. But here's the bag, here's the bottom part, and here's all the pieces. No tools are required. In fact, check out the instructions. Aren't these the easiest instructions? And it says right here, no tools required. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we've got a lot of long and medium sized poles and some of these short poles, and we are just gonna put them all together. Short to long and medium to long. So it's just got this button and a hole right there and short to long. And you really can't screw this up because the only ones that have the button on them are the long ones. And the only ones that have the little holes for them are the short and medium ones. All right, so we've got all our poles. So now let's go on to the next step, which is assembling the frame. So I'm gonna take the poles that are the shortest and I'm gonna connect the poles that are the shortest into these junction points. All right, now I'm just jamming them in, make sure that they're nice and tight. All right, next we're gonna add the longer poles. I know I was gonna put one of the poles in wrong. Going after all the long poles here. And next, we are going to take the short poles and put them inside the urban worm bag itself. So here's what it looks like in all its glory. This is the bottom here with the Velcro and the straps, and this is the top. So let's go ahead and string it together. And then when I'm putting these in, I'm making sure that this part is going down because it's gonna connect into that tall pole. In fact, I see it's got a little symbol there, so I'll keep that up. That's probably how they want me to do it. All right, getting the last pull in, and I'm sure, as you can see, it's probably very important to make sure that all these are really tight. This is what's holding it up. So let's go ahead and change the camera angle, and let's get this right, set so on here's top. Here's where we're at. We've got the frame built and the top part of the frame built, and here's what it looks like underneath. Now this part right here has this connected to it, but we're gonna do that after we fill it. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and attach the frame cross straps. Here's where things can get a little bit complicated for me, but the instructions again, super simple right there. All right, so this is good. This is where I found my first issue. I should have a place to put it here, so I need to change how this is put in here. So I'll do that real quick. All right, so it makes sense. That part should go down. Looks like I'm gonna have to change out one other one. So it's not a project unless I've gotta do something over. <laughs> That's good, you can learn from this so that you don't make the same mistake. But no big deal. All right, it says to just tighten them enough so that it takes up the slack. And there we go, let's put in the next ones. All right, so here's where, here's where this video is gonna help you out. Make sure this part right here is towards the ground or up when you put it on, because now I've gotta undo the strap. Yeah, that part right there needs to be down. All right, so a couple of lessons learned putting on these straps is put them on real slack until you get them both on, and then you can tighten them. And then additionally, make sure that these junction points right here, make sure that the little Urban Worm Company symbol is facing towards the ground. And on the top, make sure they are facing up. Otherwise, it will be difficult to put the straps on. Now, I'm not pulling these too tight, just enough so that the slack is out of them per the instructions that came with it. So I think we are good there. So, we are ready to go outside and start filling it with our cardboard and our feeding and our worms. So we've got it all set up in its place in our lanai outside. And something I wanna show you before we start filling it up. So I haven't put the very bottom on, but you can see right down here, there's a hole. And that hole right there has a drawstring. So what I did was I made it as tight as possible. 
And then I'm gonna tighten this right here. And what that does is allows us to completely fill it up. And you wanna make sure that this goes on the outside. So I'm just gonna push this through real quick. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna let us be able to fill this up and see if we're getting any drippings out of it before we add the worms or button the bottom part onto it. So let's go ahead and put a little container underneath in case we do get any kind of drippings and let's get started filling it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are just gonna put down some newspaper right here at the very bottom. And that's just to help collect anything, make sure it doesn't go through that hole. But this is all something that the worms can eat. Now the instructions say that the first bit of bedding that you put down here is probably not going to get turned into vermicasting. So what you're gonna do is you are going to in a few months, take it out and just put it right back on top. So I'm just gonna put some of our paper towel rolls down and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of dry bedding. This is all dry right now. So in just goes some of my shredded cardboard. And this again is just serving as a base. Now I have two three gallon buckets full of shredded cardboard that has been soaking in water. So that rain water that I put in there should get it to a level where if I squeeze it, only a couple drops of water will come out. So now here we go with our wet shredded cardboard. And as you can see, I squeeze it and maybe a drop, couple drops come out. And this had been sitting overnight for just a couple of days. Now the worms breathe through their skin, so they need that moisture in order to breathe. But too much moisture can cause pockets of fermentation and ammonia, that kind of thing, and that will kill the worms. So just make sure the bedding is moist, but not soaking. Another thing I did with the shredded cardboard was I used some of my compost tea and I just sprinkled some of that over the cardboard shreds to try and inoculate it with some microbes. The microbes help to break down the food and they give nutrients to the worms. So it's very important that you've got a good microbial ecosystem going in your worm bin. All right, let me see how this is doing. It's supposed to be about one fifth of the way full and I think we are probably there. So now I'm just gonna make a hole to put our feeding in. So here's what we had in mind to feed. It's just some food scraps that I have. I've got some celery stalks, some strawberry tops, a little bit of lettuce and some carrots, and here is some pumpkin. Now this is all fast food, so the worms will be able to get right to it and eat it up. Now I'm gonna put in about 1,500 worms. So this is kind of a big feeding if you only have 500 worms, and it's certainly a bigger feeding if you're just starting out your worm bin. But all the worms I'm gonna put in here come from my other bins. Next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna put in our normal worm chow right on top. And I just sprinkle very little, just another food source for them. And that worm chow comes from expired grains in my pantry. And this is just some coffee grounds, used coffee and tea grounds. That again is another food source for them. And then finally, I'm gonna add some pulverized eggshell, which is grit for their gizzards and also calcium and other nutrients for my garden. All right, now that we've fed them, I like to go ahead and bury the food scraps. Although this is sealed and it's got a zipper here, we wanna make sure no kind of critters are gonna sniff this out and try and get in here. Now, like I said, this is on our back lanai, so it's screened in, no animals should be able to get in here. And I also have a cute little wiener dog that likes to guard her lanai with all her heart. So there we go. I think we are ready for our worms. All right, so now we are ready for our worms. Now, this is my cocoon nursery that we have been adding bait worms in. I'm sorry, not bait worms, worms that we have baited out. And they came from each of my three bins that I already have. So let's take a look. <laughs> this container was used to bait out some of the worms. And you can see we've got just tons of worms that we're gonna add in here. Now you can see there's a lot of castings in here also, and that's gonna help inoculate this urban worm bag. If you don't have castings already and you just have your worms, you can use some soil from outside, or you can get some vermicompost from somewhere, or you can even use your regular compost. Just be aware if you use soil from outside or your regular compost, you may be introducing some critters in with your worms. So I think this is about 1,500 worms, it may be more. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in and I'll bury that later, but let's go ahead and put these worms in. All right, it looks like most of them have squirmed down. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this underneath a little bit and then I'm gonna bury 
some more cardboard shreddings on top. All right, so there we go. We have set up our urban worm bag. I'm just gonna put that newspaper on top and I'm gonna zip it up. And then we are just gonna check on this every day. Now, normally I don't advise checking on your worm bin every day, more like every couple or three days, very hard to resist. But I just wanna make sure the moisture is doing well in here. This thing is outside, it's drier out right now. So I wanna make sure that the moisture is at a good level for the worms to be able to survive and breed. So now that we have it all filled up and buttoned up, we're gonna put this on the bottom. It's got Velcro, we're just gonna Velcro it up and then we're gonna attach the straps. And then we will be all set. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Be looking out for a lot more videos of my new urban worm bag. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.